Don't you click that remote. Don't you change anything, because if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. Tonight's guest is State Representative Christian Mitchell. Our regular viewers would know that we taped him in late July, and you saw that show, I believe, in early August. You can find that part one of our two-part show. Tonight's show is the second part. You can find that by going to youtube.com slash public affairs TV. But if you change that, if you click that remote and you turn away from this, you're going to miss the second part, which is really the meat. I mean, we get into the fierce urgency of now. We get into the crucial aspects of the Illinois budget. We get into whether how we really improve education. We get into the um, dramatic things that need to be done to stop violence in the inner city areas of Chicago and other areas around the state of Illinois. We get into, oh, so much. So if you click that remote, oh, you saw the first part of our show with State Rep. Christian Mitchell, but the final, the climax, all of the stuff that ties it together, if you click that remote, you'll miss it. So don't click that remote, because if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. Watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name. Politics is our game. And look, as I promised, as I promised, tonight's show is going to be with State Rep. Christian Mitchell. What happened is when we when we taped him on July 24th, we ran over, ran over. It was such a good show. There was so much good stuff. We went about 45 minutes. Well, our regular viewers would know we only have 30 minutes. So what we have here is the second part. We ran the first part unedited. That was 30 minutes. Tonight she'll get to see the second part, 15 minutes. I'm going to highlight a few things in the intro, and then you'll get to see Jeff Berkowitz asking some questions of State Rep. Christian Mitchell. He, of course, is a Democrat from Bronzeville, very smart guy, very well-spoken, and look, it's going to be a contrasting view as it was the first time and the second time. So you'll see that, and then I'm going to come back at the end, and we're going to recap some things, but it's Look, this show, these shows with State Rep. Krista Mitchell, they get to the core of the issue. <clears throat> I mean, look, let's do, let's do a bit of a, we'll come back, well, maybe to, to give you a sense of what's coming up. I mean, we're going to be talking on the show about the flat tax. Is it as Representative Mitchell says that the flat tax is really regressive? We have to have a progressive tax. We have to change the Constitution. We have to persuade Speaker Mike Madigan that all of his members, or many of them, are going to be safe so he can go ahead and support that that uh, constitutional amendment and have a progressive income tax. We have to tax the rich much more. This is all of what we have to do to solve our problems. We have to expand Medicaid even more than we have. We have to see that those people who sometimes, he calls them outliers, but you have families with incomes of $70,000 getting Medicaid. Is that really fair to the low-income families who are getting squeezed out, not getting what they need to help them? Oh, the minimum wage, that's really the way to help low-income people? Does it cause unemployment? Is there anybody at the University of Chicago who's an economist who would agree with State Rep. Mitchell? Am I demagoguing the issues? Did he say that I am? Did he say it part one? Did he say it part two? Oh, am I, am I using knee-jerk textbook examples? Look, uh, Representative, Representative Mitchell and I are good buddies, okay? Seriously, I think a lot of him. I respect him. I said so on the show. If you watch the first show I did with him, look, he fought the good fight. He had a tough primary. He believes in school choice to some extent, not as much as I might like, but he certainly believes in charter schools, and the teachers unions came after him with a vengeance for that. They came after him for his views about pension reform, which I agree with him needs to be done. So there's a lot to like about Representative Mitchell, but, and look, personally, he's fine. I don't take any of this personally. The question is, are his views the best views for the people in his district and for the state of Illinois? That's what we're trying to find out. I'm not running for anything. I'm just trying to challenge those views, probe, and get you folks to think about them. Okay? Uh, so minimum wages are important. We deal with that. We deal with the fact that only 20% of the fourth, black fourth graders in CPS read at grade level. Oh, you know, so that, that's all coming up, okay? And just as a really brief recap as to where we were, I mean, and, and I think this is important as to what we've covered. If you don't go back and watch the first show taped along with this, we're the, what we're taping now is being taped on September, um, September 5th. 
But, you know, if you go back and see at the first show, we start out with Representative Mitchell t ticking off and saying, we've got to do more if we want to help low-income people. And, and there are a significant number in his district that he represents, which is over on the south side of Chicago. It's half of the Senate district that Barack Obama represented when he was a state senator. He said we have to do more on the violence side, we have to do more about improving education, we have to do more for jobs, and he focused a lot on straw purchasers. And when you get right down to it, I mean, look, he wants to do a study. Right now he's doing a study. We're now in September 5. He's going to have a study done by November sometime, November 1. He's going to figure out are we throwing the book at straw, purchase, straw purchasers, are we throwing the book at people who let guns get into the hands of the bad guys in gangs. Are we? I mean, I asked him, like, what's the sentence? He didn't know. Why don't you just sit down and talk to the state's attorney, find out about the sentences, find out what's really happening, Anita Alvarez, state's attorney, Cook County, find out about the, uh, what's going on with the U.S. attorney, Zach Farden. I mean, really, there's a fierce urgency of now. This stuff has to get handled now. We all know about the shootings, you know, 80 shootings in a weekend, 10 murders in Chicago. And some weekends a little better, only 40 shootings. Obama talked about this. He quoted Dr. Martin Luther King about the fierce urgency of now. Look, all our state reps, I'm picking on Christian Representative Mitchell, but you got 177 down there. You've got a governor. I mean, he's talking about raising the minimum wage. That's what he's going to do. And he's got an opponent who's nibbling on the edges. Both of these folks running for governor, Quinn running for re-election, Rauner as the Republican nominee, they have to understand there's a fierce urgency of now. People are dying. Kids are dying here in Chicago. We can't do studies. We can't lollygag around. We've got to get, improve, we got to get improvements. We have to get kids learning how to read now. We've got to see what's going on with Prentice. Um, it, it, with the folks over at the, uh, the, the Christo Ray Network of Schools, okay? Preston Kendall up in Waukegan. We've got to find out with works and we've got to replicate it now. I hope I'm making myself clear. All right, enjoy the show. We'll be back and talk with you right after it. Stay, just stay with it and you're gonna, if you do, you're gonna see a really, 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 really good show. People said, look, you know, all we have to do is restrict spending in 2015 fiscal to 2014 fiscal, and we've solved the billion and a half shortfall. Mm -hmm. And people, Pat Quinn and the Republicans and you and everybody can say, we have a balanced budget. Do you agree? Do we have a balanced budget in 2015? So we have a, we have a depending on how that goes, we have a challenge. And here's, here's let Wait me, a second. No, no, Jeff, let me explain okay. to you why. Okay. Let me explain to you why. So. I would just like a yes or no. Do we have a balanced budget? Here's our issue. So okay. you talked about the spending number okay. going up just based on what we were doing right. before. Yeah. Here's the issue. So everybody talks about the income tax and talks about it as, as us taking in more revenue than we ever had at any point in history. We have, for the first time over the past couple of years since that increase passed, made our full pension payment. So 26 new billion new dollars has come in, okay. and we've spent 28 on pensions. Okay. Uh, we have, over the last, let's say, 10 years, fiscal years, adjusted for inflation, we have cut K through 12 by 11 percent, higher education is down 40 percent, public safety and human services both down about 20 percent. So we cut K through 12 uh, about 11 percent? About 10.7. Now, you want to tell me, because the budget was just passed in CPS a week or so ago, hmm? do you know what the total budget is? Everything, capital costs, variable costs, CPS. Do you know roughly what that budget is? Ballpark. About six, I think. A little less than six. six. Yeah. It's not down. It's not down by 11 percent. No way, because then you would be telling the budget is 6.4 billion last year, and it wasn't. So that budget. That's statewide. Is, yeah. Okay, but I'm just telling you, CPS statewide. is not down. So statewide, you know what? New is just fine. They don't need any help from anybody down in Springfield. You know that. I know that. And everybody watching this show knows that. So this 11 percent cuts that occurred that didn't apparently happen in CPS. No, I think didn't it happen in Trier. Where C the hell did it happen? CPS has had deferred payments, deferred maintenance. No, balloon, but it wasn't balloon, cut. Hold on, Jeff. Ballooning pay, pension payments. Like this is it's not money that's making it to the classroom. And my point here is, at some point, you are no longer cutting fat, you are, no, you are cutting muscle, you are cutting bone, you are cutting the things that are required to grow. So when people say, mm. let it drop to 375, there isn't anybody who can answer to me what that $4 billion question is over the next two years. They can't answer that question. So what I think we need to do is, we currently have a tax system that is so regressive that you would be to the right of every Republican in Washington if you propose it nationally. We have a flat income tax. I would, we need we, to go- Wait a second, we have a tax, we, 
who would be to the right of what? Because we have a nationally, we have a what what I would call a fair tax. We have a, an income tax that is based on lower it's rates paying lower incomes, it's a higher rates paying higher incomes. Did you know nine states in this country have no income tax? And if if somebody has a proportional tax and they, they would be to the right it's of everybody, a, it's, what would the nine hold states on, no, be? No, Jeff. What would Texas be? Would they be like? Jeff. Would they live like be? I don't a know flat tax be. is regressive in the same way that a sales tax is regressive, right? It's a larger share of your income, especially when you are, you know, for example, if I'm I'm buying a gallon of gas and the tax no, is it's not 10 regressive. Cents. One it is, is revenue, regressive. and one is and one is consumption. And if if somebody if somebody if somebody when happens to, to earn two hundred thousand dollars in the state of Illinois, roughly they pay now five percent. That that means they pay ten thousand dollars. Okay, right. and the person earning a hundred thousand dollars pays how much? Five thousand no, dollars. But when, and so I'm just Jeff, wondering. You're saying the when you count is, sales taxes, property taxes, you know, this, excise taxes, we they pass tax. through taxes on a, pound, no, on a gallon we were of gas. Talking we're talking tax. about let's talk about total tax burden though. When okay, you were talking, wait. when you talk about it that way, you were talking about the income tax. When you talk if you about want to say the income tax is regressive. tax burden. No, but you got Jeff. When you talk about total tax burden right now, okay. the tax rates on the top one percent mean that they are paying. Middle class families are paying about twice as much as a share of income compared to the top 1%. So the short of it is So the point of it is, the way we okay. could get to a more balanced budget, the way we could make sure that we can fund the programs we need for a 21st century economy is by switching to a, rate, a, a way that lower people pay lower rates, higher tax? people pay higher rates. But you know, Mike Absolutely. Madigan, your leader, your speaker, said the hell with this. I'd lose seats. I want to stay speaker. He didn't push at all for a progressive income tax to be. You have to change the Constitution. You we know do. That. And I'm the chief you sponsor of that. In but you know, That's Speaker Mike, don't waste your time with me. Really, I shouldn't have asked you to do the show. I love that you're here, but you need to spend your time talking to Speaker Mike. I don't agree with that. Because you could change my mind, but it wouldn't do a speaker, damn bit of good. Look, the Speaker, the speaker, is, the speaker did speaker not want to do what you wanted to, to do. his caucus, and we've got to continue to build support. I think it's okay, there. But th so the, your point is, you Democrats who have a 71-47 majority in the, in, in, in the State House, you're saying you can't persuade your other colleagues. You know, you're one of 71, and you've sure. got 70 Democrats, and you can't persuade enough of them to get a pro to want a progressive income tax. So Mike Madigan doesn't want it because his members don't want it. I think we're going to get. I think we're getting okay. fairly close. I think Jeff, what happens is it take look, at, like everything in politics. You've been around this for long enough. When I reality say, once sets again, in, people, people are dying. Start to Let understand. me just remind you, with all due respect, Christian, people are dying. Kids are dying. We started the show with that. We're going to end with that. They're dying. Mm -hmm. They don't have time for you to amend the Constitution, to wait two years to persuade your members that they should do it differently. They just don't have time, okay? They don't have time to do a study on violence. They don't have time. They need to get it done now because, you know, next weekend, 10 more kids are going to die. Yeah, but we're, look, and Jeff, then we're 10, 40 more shootings, 80 more shootings. You have to come... You know, Barack Obama said this. We need a sense of urgency, wasn't that? Remember and we have Dr. Huge, Martin Luther King. We do, we do. But we where's also, the urgency? I'm have, the only guy who's urgent here. I don't disagree. I don't agree with that okay. at all, Jeff. We got to go touch on quickly. In the past, Jeff, I, I, I'm sorry. I got to push back on you on this we'll urgency just push, piece you've because we only got in, a few minutes left. That's do you fine. Use your time to push what, back. What on I'm you? saying to you is, in our first term, look, we have expanded health care coverage for people who needed it. We have passed that universal background checks bill that I talked you about. You have of seven people earning $70,000 who are eligible for Medicaid. We're going to hear more about it. Did you know there are people who are earning $70,000 who are eligible for Medicaid as a result of your expanding? You didn't help people. You hurt people. Because I don't agree with the that. the low-income people are not the 70,000 income people. They, if Indeed. you give it to somebody who's earning seventy thousand, you're giving this less to guys who are earning. That sounds 30, like an outlier, Jeff. Let's not make an outlier the emblem for the whole program. Let's well, not we'll, do that. That's we'll, not. We'll fair. talk to people. I mean, okay. You're telling me there are no people, or there are just very few. Or I'm what? telling you. If there are any, this is it's like, not doing this is right. like when something was okay. flashed in the front page okay. and said we were paying twelve million in Medicaid to deaf people. First okay. of all, it that wasn't actually. Should the they raise the minimum wage? Absolutely. Mm. Even though all the studies, you've been at the University of Chicago, you've talked to economists, all the studies show when you raise the minimum wage, you cause an increase in unemployment. I'm not sure which studies you're reading, Jeff, because that's not the case. Because hold do on, do you know any economists National at, Federation the, of do you know any National economists at your, at your school, the University of Chicago? Do you know any economists the at the University of Chicago? National Federation at your school of Independent you? Businesses has said that right behind the exploding cost of health care, the thing that is driving down their ability to actually hire and create jobs is a lack of consumer demand. What happens when you put more money in the pockets of people well, are going to go to the local grocer, the local small business? If it's just more money, here, I'll give you more money. It doesn't make any sense because to pay the higher minimum wage, somebody's going to have to have less to spend. You know, WBZ just, Where does the money come WBZ from? WBZ just from published a study that said that we had WBZ. these states... 
or, or they, they just refer to a study that says the states that have recently raised the minimum wage have experienced higher job growth than the states that have not. So no, I, the I studies are bearing study. it out. Anything that WBZ puts out, I challenge. Just if, you know, by it's a prima facie case. But seriously, you went to University of Chicago. More Nobel Prize winners there than any other university in the world. Mm -hmm. Name one economist at the University of Chicago who supports your position. The University of Chicago is one school of economics, and as much as I love my alma mater, I think that part of their you school can't find one part economist? of at the University of Chicago, okay. which was kind of in charge of the the uh, the economics department that may have had a little bit to do with 2008. So look, I love my alma mater, but we have disagreements on these things. The unions came after you in the primary, especially the Chicago teachers unions. Did I get that right? Indeed you did. And did they, because you supported pension reform. I supported that pension reform. And, and you I support did. charter schools and you support school choice. Mm -hmm. despite, the time, despite the fact that I gave you a hard time, you deserve a, lot of, a lot of credit for those, the charter what schools What do you mean you when you support. say school choice? Because indeed I may not. Well, charter schools are a school choice. A person who's in a failing traditional neighborhood school mm -hmm. Has, should have a choice, and one of those choices should be to go to a charter school. You I don't, agree with that, I, right? I do agree with that. Once again, to be clear, okay. they are not a panacea. I d well, I think they're more important than you, but I give you credit for thinking they're important enough for you to give them your sure. support. And that was one of the things that the Chicago Teachers Union went after you on. They did. Because as you know, they don't think there should be any competition. They don't think parents should have any freedom. They believe in a model in which when a kid goes to a school, he must stay there for the rest of his life or her life. You know they believe that. And they believe teachers who are not performing should not be removed. They don't believe in any competition. They don't believe in any tying performance at all to compensation. We can't make any reform, and I just give you a lot of credit. I'm Sam Balanced, and I am, and I don't. And we we challenge everybody. We challenge Republicans. We challenge Democrats. But every once in a while, somebody like you should get a lot of credit for standing in one for pension reform, and two for choice, as I see it. Not as much as I would do, but still, but still, it is credit. And three, you you fought a hard battle, and you, you preserved your your seat, and you should get some credit for that. I appreciate that, and, and I, my hope is that we can look. None of us are completely right about the schools piece. There are, there are some things that folks on the left say in terms of needing more resources, needing to make sure that we do professional development with teachers that are absolutely right, and I think that CTU's got some points there. There are things that we say in terms of more accountability, making sure that we don't necessarily adhere entirely to you know, first in, first out in terms of our teacher retention policies. Absolutely. But we can't demagogue this, Jeff, because no, kids are Who's, demag kids who's aren't demagoguing what? Are you, you're not saying I'm demagoguing I'm something. not saying you necessarily are demagoguing on this issue. Are Economically, you, we could probably argue about that. But I think that... You, no, seriously. If you, if you, are you saying I've demagogued anything at all today? I, no, Jeff. I, okay. would, I would never... So who, who, why are we talking about demagoguing? Are you saying your opponents in the primary were What I'm saying is there is a... The teachers, Chicago teachers... There is a temptation, Jeff to say that I'm in this camp and we're completely right, whether, let's say, that's the education uh -huh. reform camp and I'm the traditional uh, union side of this that says it's all about making sure that we have more resources, and I don't think that's right either. And I think that people realize that, and the answer isn't necessarily quite in the middle, but I do think that it's somewhere closer to the middle than either side would admit. And I'm looking to find those methods of consensus, and I think this education reform package is one of them. Is there anything we haven't covered that you think we should I think we've been pretty comprehensive. I would just say that, you know, I think this education funding reform initiative, I know you don't totally agree with it, is the one thing I want viewers to really pay attention I just to because it can it, be transformed. It's not so much like, I just think it doesn't have the dramatic effect that kids need. And I, I'm serious about this. And I hope you don't think I'm demagoguing. I don't live in Inglewood, but I read the papers and I talk to people who do in other areas. Not, look, a lot of good things go on in Inglewood. I don't mean to say they're not. They do. But they have a higher incidence of a lot of these violence problems than many other areas, certainly than, than New Trier Township. And, I, you know, I read about kids who go a slumber party and, and they don't make yeah. it through the night. But, Jeff, here's the And here's I, I'm saying I don't, and with all due respect, Christian, Representative Mitchell, with all due respect, when you sit here and you say, we've got to study this and we've got to do this and we'll get it in November, I really think you have to, you and your colleagues, I'm not blaming you. Sure. You and your Republican and Democratic colleagues, you and your Republican Democratic leaders, you know, Speaker Mike Madigan and Republican Minority Leader Jim Durkin need to spe step it up in the House. And if, if Madigan does do it, then Durkin needs to take the lead so Jeff, because people are you. dying. Jeff, I agree with you, but we also have to do this right. And so when we talk about things that could, that could involve massive uprooting in terms of completely flipping our school system on its head in a way that I would argue has not succeeded other places, we have to think about 
the institutions in our community, we have to think about the ways that we actually invest. Because what people in my community know and understand is there always seems to be a way to find dollars for projects that affect those who have the lobbyists and have the wealth and those things, and they don't have the same level gonna, of investment in our public schools. You're not going to get more money out of these folks. That's why my approach is to say, since you can't get more money out of wealthy people to do this, at least give the kids in the schools that are failing the but opportunity to benefit from competition. That means tomorrow they can benefit. Tomorrow they can take the $13,000 and leave. Tomorrow, if there aren't those 10,000 slots that I talked of and there are 20,000 who want to leave, tomorrow but somebody can build a school, can give them a classroom. We have to, all Which I'm once again is, requires we, money. Here's, no, I no, no, it, it requires just giving them, you don't understand. I said, take the 13,000. I used to do this with a backpack and I'd put the 13,000 that we spent. I say it's 15, you say it's 13, fine. Assuming arguendo, you're right. Take the 13,000, put it in the backpack, give every parent a backpack. If the kid leaves, yeah, but Jeff, if the I kid leaves, out that. goes the backpack, because out goes the cash. But, and you say you have to preserve those, the public schools? Those no, are dollars. No, we have to preserve the kids who are we do have to do that, how to read. But they go home, Jeff. And if there's no investment in their community, if there's no investment in the brick and mortar and the jobs and the institutions and making sure that we have cops on the street, for the folks who come into the city of Chicago and work, the bottom line is this. You come in on roads that we pay for with our public dollars. You get your goods to and from market with those same things. You expect your customers to have money based on the jobs they have from the education that they've received. You've okay. got to be willing to invest in that. And if you do, we will see results over time, not tomorrow. We have to do this right. Just because it's emotional, just because we're all hurting, doesn't mean we can be knee-jerk and make public policy decisions that are going to be harmful in the long term. I would say there's no evidence that what I'm suggesting is harmful. There's lots of evidence. There's that plenty. But let me finish. I let you speak. Yes, sir. There's no evidence that's suggesting that w that's just what I'm saying is harmful. There's no evidence that vouchers don't work, especially when, and we've almost never tried it, a fully funded voucher. Give all the money that we're spending now to the parents and say, don't give 5000 of the 13000 Don't give 7000 Give all 13000 You can't point to one example in the United States where we've done that, okay? And when that happens and you find it getting worse, you come back on this show and you tell me about it. I can say that with assurance. There are no studies that show that because we haven't done it, okay? And all I'm saying is, and I guess you don't know the statistic, but Robin Staines, you know, sister of Heather Staines, she's the one who gave this to me, roughly 20% of the black fourth graders in CPS read at grade level. Mm -hmm. 20%, 80% don't. Hispanics, not much higher, maybe 25%. That's why 25%. we have to invest in early childhood no, no. education. I agree. No, no. We need to do something now. And your your stuff about we got to study, we got to get more money, we got to get a progressive income tax, you know what? Too many kids are going to be dead because when they don't learn how to read, they join gangs, they get shot, they shoot other innocent people. I say stop it now. Try what I've suggested for a year. A year, Christian. We've been trying your approach for about the last 30 years, and if it went the end of one year, you could I'm show sorry, it's Jeff, not working. I agree with that. Well, you don't want to try something for a year. You Jeff, wouldn't try that, it for Jeff, a year. That's that, that's not something you can try for a year. That's not. I don't. I don't know if you, I'm. I'm willing to. I'm willing to say the evidence after a one year will be strong enough that you and everybody else will be convinced. I now, I would like. That. I would like more time, but you know what? I'm going to hold myself to the same standard I, I told you to. The fierce urgency of now, I quote no more authoritative source than Barack Obama, right. the man who held the seat, the Senate seat. But Jeff, I'm actually living this right now, so I, I, don't, I don't quite appreciate the implication that somehow your urgency is higher. I'm living in these communities. What I'm saying is the change has okay. to be real, sustainable, and transformative, not knee-jerk based on something we read in a textbook. Okay, I'm not going to engage in the homonym of tax. I haven't called anything you said knee-jerk. I'm a little disappointed that you're calling what I'm, I'm not. That's not an attack. And that's not an attack. No, it, it wasn't is. meant to, to call be. It, so well, to call it knee-jerk is an ad hominem attack. I you don't agree that? with that, but that wasn't my intention. If you took it that way, I apologize. Well, I'm just saying you come back in November. Tell me what's really happened about gun violence. You come back in November. Tell me about the number of kids who are in your neck of the woods in the in Chicago public schools, in the worst parts of Chicago. Tell me about the improvements you've made for them. Tell me about the tens of thousands of kids who are now reading at a better grade level. 
okay? When you can do that about violence, when you can do that about, you know, improvement in education, when you can show me those straw purchasers are being dealt with now, when you can tell me the sentences are being dealt with, sure. well, when you can do all of that, I'm going to support you for governor. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Stay Rep. Christian Mitchell. Pleasure. Right. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that show. That was part two of our two-part series with State Rep. Christian Mitchell, Democrat from Bronzeville, Democrat from the south side of Chicago. Let's recap a few things. Take that as an average, $15,000 per kid per year. Do you think we ought to be able to teach kids how to read in fourth grade for that level? We're not. 20% are learning how to read at that grade level, and 80% aren't. The problem is not going to be fixed by more money. It's going to be fixed by competition, by innovation. Think of groups like, you know, KIPP, Knowledge is Power, Teach for America, AmeriCorps. Young kids come in who haven't, they didn't major in education. They majored in English and history and science and chemistry and physics. And for two years, they give it a go and they teach a lot and they inspire kids and they succeed. We have to figure out how to do more of that. We have to have competition that figures out how do you deal with these intractable problems, these very difficult intractable problems in the city of Chicago. That's what we have to do. We have to do it now, Christian. We can't, we can't start talking about changing formulas and doing this and that. No, no. You can't say that's demagoguing. That's understanding. I mean, would you call Martin Luther King a demagogue when he said fierce urgency of now? Would you call Barack Obama a demagogue when he quoted Dr. Martin Luther King? I don't think so. Competition works. Look, we've studied this. You've got your degree, Representative Mitchell, from the University of Chicago, undergraduate degree. You studied economics there. More Nobel Prize winners in economics than any other university across the world, okay? They know their stuff. Couldn't name one economist who agreed with you that minimum wages are the way to go. Increasing the minimum wage just increases unemployment. Yes, some people get jobs at a higher salary, but many people get less work or no work. It's not a net plus. You've got to improve the education of the kids. That's how you get them to get higher wages. You've got to give everybody who doesn't have it more skills. That's the way you get them, whether it's vocational, whether it's academic. You can't just wish a higher wage for people. You can't just legislate a higher wage. You have to increase the productivity of these folks, increase the training, increase the education, increase their skills. The market will then pay them a higher wage. It's really, it's just that simple. In some, some, and it's really important, if you want to get at crime, you've got to have heavy sentences for people who use guns illegally. You should know what the sentences are. You should know what judges are doing. And if they're not doing the right thing, figure out a way to change it and do it now. The fierce urgency of now. If you've got to improve education, you've got to have school choice and competition. You have to have vouchers. You have to have individuals who can control their funds. And if the school isn't performing, they take their funds and go to another school. Let them do that. That's what Jesse Jackson, Reverend Jackson, did with Jesse Jackson, Jr. That's what Speaker Madigan did with Lisa Madigan. She went to a private school. That's what all these Democratic politicians do when they live in areas, inner city areas, that don't have performing schools. They opt out. They have the money to do it. State Senator Kwame Raoul, he has the money to do it. Let's give some money. Can't give as much to everybody, but enough so a difference can be had. $15,000? Give them that school voucher. Give them that school choice. Don't stand in the way. Let them leave a failing school and go to a succeeding school. You got to fix violence now. You got to get the bad people who are in jail there. You got to get kids able to read. Because if they're able to read, they won't. They won't drop out. They they will succeed. They will graduate. They will go on to college. They won't join gangs. They join gangs. They shoot other people. Innocents get hurt. You've got kids dying. You've got to stop that now.